Ho. Good morning. How are you? I'm okay. Glad to hear it. Hi, everyone. Hello, hello. I do apologize. I've been trying to get to the meetings early to start them up, and I was a little bit on time today, um, <laughs> which delayed things a bit. Well, so we'll wait a couple of minutes for everyone to show up. Hey, guys. Hi, Ed. Hey. Hi, how you doing? I'm fine. Hmm. <clears throat> Give it about two more minutes, I think, for folks to turn up and then we'll, we'll dive in. Lots of good stuff has been happening this week. So, among other things, I now have ping working correctly over the forwarder, which is good news. Nice. Yeah, it turns out there were a couple things that we hadn't thought through all the way before that came out because of, of Frederick's IPAM, which was that we previously hadn't been handling slash 32 addresses correctly um, as desks or sources. And so now, now we are um, in the sense that um, if you've got a slash 32 as a, 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 on the opposite end of a link, um, then we will go ahead and insert the route for it. Um, into the namespace. Okay, should we go ahead and get going? Let me go ahead and share the board. It gives us some nice structure to walk through. Folks can point out if there are things that I've missed that are not on here. Um, okay, so it looks like on the review in progress for the installation failure piece. Let's take a quick look at that. I think we're just waiting for folks to respond on the fact that we've merged 275. So I think this is, from the point of view of this call, I think this is done. So we should probably close it. All right, uh, in progress. <clears throat> so I think You've updated the API to the latest um, SDK now? Uh, yep, I think we can close this issue. Excellent, I was very, very pleased by that. I, as you sort of saw, I had a couple of things I wanted to make small changes to the API over the weekend. And I was gonna have a conversation on Monday morning about how maybe we should revert the registry stuff until we were ready to fix SDK. And I got up on Monday morning and SDK had fixes. So excellent work. Thank you. Uh, cool. So interdomain NSM, bulk register NSE. So I think you now have some new logs here, if I recall correctly. Uh, yes. Just landed also, this morning. Also here I have uh, provided a test on CI with steps from the issue and this test uh, passed on all clusters. Uh, also a uh, user uh, <laughs> provided his setup. Uh, Looks like um, he's 
you said uh, for OpenStack virtual machines. So uh, I'll try to reproduce uh, the problem with uh, these uh, virtual machines. Okay. Uh, probably I will reproduce this. <laughs> okay, no, much appreciated. I'm, I'm glad he finally got back to you with a little more information. Um, and and it, it's good that we've got excellent engagement here with our users, especially as they're moving into more esoteric setups. Um, you know, the goal is to work everywhere. So the more everywhere we've tried, the better. All right. Um, advanced OPA policies. I think some of this is still, as we discussed last week, is blocking on getting more stuff together because we, we've done some of this work, but now we want to actually be able to, you know, things like the SFC work, the multi-cluster work, we actually want to be able to drive that in those environments. So. I think this one is still sort of on hold as a result. Um, the inner domain stuff, I know that you've, you've put up a bit of work on, <clears throat> on this in the Google Doc on the DNS stuff particularly. I apologize, I completely forgot to have a look. Has anybody else had a chance to have a look? Oh, okay, uh, also uh, I mostly finished uh, doc for uh, interdomain uh, for SDK. Fantastic. Um, I'll. Uh, uh, sent a link to the doc for you uh, tomorrow, I think. And cool. after that, I think we can share this document for uh, all community. That, that's fantastic. And, and please feel free to go, just go ahead and attach it to the issue here. Um, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to have that discussion in, in public. So, okay, cool. <clears throat> Um, I presume that, so any, any update on this go routine leak that, that keeps intermittently happening? Uh, I think no. Okay. We will keep an eye on that. Um, so the WireGuard VPN plugin, how is that going? Uh, yeah, uh, the last week uh, I solved my problem with the packet lost in the middle of the data sending. And mm -hmm. now the keys are updating correctly when expired. I tested it on 1000 pink packets and uh, no packets were lost. And well, that's now, fantastic news. Yeah. Uh, and now I'm cleaning my code and preparing my draft PR. Uh, oh, that's, that's, that's fantastic news. Um, do, 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 you know, do let me know when you, you've pushed that up as a Garrett um, to VPP, um, because that's, that's fantastic. And I, we've got a lot of friends over there. Um, I can sort of, you know, point various of them at, at it. Um, okay. And, but as I said, do be clear that this is sort of your first functional turn and that it hasn't been performance optimized yet. They're, as you might imagine, performance obsessed, um, but they also really understand the, I've just gotten this working and I haven't performance optimized yet. They, they, they totally get that. And they may have very useful suggestions on how to performance optimize it. So, cool. All right. So you're expecting to get that, that pushed this week then, correct? Uh, yes, I, I think uh, I have questions uh, about this. Uh -huh. uh, <clears throat> the question is about the license. Um, mostly I used code from WireGuard Linux Compat repo and it has a GPA license. Oh, that uh, is a very bad problem, actually. <laughs> that, is, that is a very bad problem. Uh, we can't be copy and pasting from GPL license things. Mm. Right, because there, there is no way that it will be acceptable upstream with any kind of a GPL tank. Mm. Mm. So, um, so we what need you're to find alternatives for these libraries for siphoning. Yeah, well, exactly. Um, you, you do need to find alternatives. Um, you know, and it may just be that that you invite involve you know. So I guess the question is, this is libraries, correct? This is not c copy and pasting of code. This is just libraries. 
Uh, yes, it's libraries. So. Okay. What 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 are you using from the libraries? Just out of curiosity. Um, I use a crypto library uh, for. So um, as I remember our discussions with Artyom, uh, there is a crypto library uh, inside the WireGuard uh, source tree. So uh, he reused it this library to implement crypto functions of a WireGuard. Okay, so this is a library for ChaCha20, basically. If I recall. Not, not, not only ChaCha20, but uh, there is few protocols use it inside the WireGuard. Okay. Um, yeah, I would, I would start looking for alternatives to those that are either Apache or BSD licensed. You're more likely to find BSD licensed alternatives. Um, I would honestly be really, really, really surprised if there were not BSD licensed implementations of those crypto algorithms, particularly ChaCha20. The ChaCha20 guys, um, independent of the fact that they're good cryptographers, are also super brilliant at pushing adoption. and. Mm -hmm not having a sort of a BSD licensed implementation would really slow adoption. Yeah, okay. So do look around. All of that said, by the way, um, I think you probably have done things in the right order of steps in the sense that um, first you want to get something working because you can always go find new libraries. Uh, so you've worked out your own problems there and now you're just looking at how do you sub in proper libraries for it. Um, and you also, you know, it was very, very good of you to note the potential issue around licensing and raise it. That's going to make a big difference as well. Mm -hmm. So you, overall, you've done everything right. We just have a problem to clean up. Okay. Cool. Excellent. Anything else on the WireGuard VPP plugin? Mm, no, I, I think that's all. Fantastic. Um, okay, the network service manager stuff. I, I know that there are lots of pieces that have been in motion on this, um, Andre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I have updated, almost updated, a uh, few pull requests to SDK. Uh, we have switching to the new registry stuff. Cool. And uh, it suddenly, because we have uh, just one euro in the registry now, uh, mm -hmm. I need to modify a local bypass and set URL chain elements. So set URL mm -hmm. will need to remember in context the endpoint URL, which is pass it uh, during registration. Mm -hmm. Since it could contain callback or Unix socket, I need to connect back to endpoint. Uh, mm -hmm. And for registry, I need a uh, registry URL. Yeah, no, so. this, 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 is, this is not surprising. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, it's work, but it's not surprising. So that, that's, that, that sounds like good progress. And, and I also happened to, when I was going through either yesterday or today, and I was reviewing various things, I went back to look at your PR to the command repo. And it looks like you're still getting your work done in SDK before updating that. Cause it's still changing an awful lot of, it has an awful lot of files associated with it. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's cool. That's absolutely cool. So, um, this should be good. Um, yeah, the, the pieces are, are starting to come together nicely. Um, among other things, it should be, you know, with the, I still have, I'm still writing tests for the forwarder, but once those tests are actually written and in place, then I think the only remaining piece is to add the, you know, registration bit and away we go. Yeah. And the, for, the forwarder should be in good shape. Um, but mm, it, it turns out actually uh, no, good. Not only registration, but the call back to NS manager. I've not seen uh, this quote Oh, yet. true, true. Yes, yes. I could go ahead and add that at top level. Um, totally. I can go ahead and add that at top level in the main file. Um, I, I presume that that was going to be easy. I also need to add the Jaeger trace bits, frankly, as well. Um, so, yeah, definitely. Um, but I think that will end up being fairly easy as well. Yeah, it should um, be. Yeah. Cool. All right. Then we've got um, <clears throat> the kernel forwarder. Do we have anyone related to the kernel forwarder stuff on the call today? Nope. Okay. I, I know Radoslav is continuing to engage on the on some PRs around that. So I know he's he's up to things. 
uh, just not here. Um, okay, um, the SROV forwarder. I think I've seen some PRs to the command repo. Uh, yeah, I've added the uh, code for forwarder initializing and discovering uh, okay. physical functions and so on. So work in progress. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like I said, I've seen some PRs. I haven't had a chance to go through them yet in detail, um, but it's good that you're making forward progress there. Um, so excellent. And you've been able to get a setup going in packet so that you can actually try things? Yeah, so get try it with, as I remember, have some progress in it. Uh, so cool. actually for a survey, uh, just today has internal discussion about how forwarder uh, configurations should be managed. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, Denis has idea about uh, endpoint uh, adding additional CRDs to the registry. So the survey forwarder could uh, find uh, more details about endpoints or uh, about some discovery of uh, so what, what, service to virtual function associations. Okay, so um, let's, let's take that conversation offline a bit because I'm very interested in it. If you guys could raise that in the Pound NSM or Pound NSM Dev Slack channel um, after meeting after the meetings and or if that's too late for you guys to say no, it's getting late for you, um, you know, start pulling together a little bit of a doc talking about it. Um, I'd be really curious to see what you're thinking there um, to sort of what kinds of problems you're trying to solve and, and how. I mean, generally, we don't want to weld to Kubernetes, but at the same time, there are places where it actually makes sense to utilize Kubernetes. So, mm -hmm. cool. Um, yeah, okay, we will try to formulate it. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, essentially, it sounds like you've come across a set of things that, that probably that, that either you thought of a novel way to address or that haven't occurred to me. So I'm, I'm super excited for this conversation. Okay, um, Ivanova is not here, I think, for the visualized network traffic stuff. Um, WireGuard remote mechanism support for the VPP forwarder. That's obviously blocking on the VPP plugin. Um, generalize um, authorized chain element. This one, I think this is done. Yeah, I also think this is done. I mean, in fact, we, we wound up with a much better generalization, I think, than what is even listed here um, in the sense that um, you can drop that in any kind of authorized uh, chain element you want, which may or may not involve OPA. We happen to have built ones that involve OPA, um, which actually makes me super happy. I like good modularity. Um, okay, so on the to-do, uh, handle the case where the network service endpoint is already set. I think these three are, are sort of new placeholders that got dropped in to keep track of registry work. Uh, that, the refresh chain and the resource stuff. Is that correct, Denise? Denise? Oh, we lost Denise. <laughs> yeah. It looks like we lost him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We lost Denise. Yeah, I think, okay. yeah. Cool. Uh, command forwarder, VPP agent. This one I'm working on, um, and it's getting really close. I mean, I'm, I'm literally to the point of, okay, now ping works, and I've got tests that, that do ping. Uh, now I should really probably check to make sure the interfaces have landed in the namespaces I thought, because otherwise the ping is super uninteresting. Because uh, just because ping works does not mean that anything has gone right. Um, <laughs> it's not the only consideration. Um, yeah, okay. still could be bugs in VSDK as we found, I think, yesterday. But, oh, I, uh, I, if you do next request again, <laughs> it'll just uh, do a concurrency. <laughs> yeah, no, that was super subtle. I was impressed. Um, I mean, but e even with this one getting ping working, like I pushed a bunch of small PRs to SDK VPP agent where it's like, I'm actually assigning the IP addresses to the wrong side of the, of the to the wrong side. Oops. Or, um, or you know that kind of thing, or discovering, for example, that um, I need to have the the proper routes for slash thirty twos, for example. 
Um, so all of that was, was super interesting. Um, <clears throat> but that, it's, it's coming together. Like I said, the tests I'm writing right now are things like checking the interfaces are in the right place, et cetera. Um, the other one that I may do in passing here is right now, all of our cross connects are L2 cross connects, um, which are in, sort of intrinsically L2 payload. Um, and that's part of why I added the payload field to um, the network service endpoint, uh, so the, the request, the connection, the request is so that we can, when we have an L3 payload, we can actually do L3 cross connects instead of L2 cross connects, which should actually make a lot of stuff go better. And that's usually, I think, what most people want. Um, okay, define and implement example test OP use cases. I think this is done. What do you think, Frederick? Do we have Frederick? You're muted, Frederick. Yeah, sorry, my system was not being responsive to my unmuting attempts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I think, so this one, I think we're, um, we are, yeah, I, I saw that there were some use, some uh, examples there. Um, I liked what I saw there. And so I think that we're, we're good with this one. Um, so is it good to close? Yeah, let's go ahead and close this one. Okay, cool. Uh, so authorization monitor chain elements. Um, I think this is still sort of hanging out. Um, the go mod control plane v3.0. I think this one actually, yeah, that one still needs to be checked back on. Um, Uh, network service CRDs respond with old values when network service manager tries to find a match. Let's take a look. There are lots of good logs here. Okay, so it looks like uh, the Parmisa 86 is actually going to try and fix this themselves, um, which is fantastic. Um, so, and, and they, they, they've asked good questions and I think I've gotten them answers. So I think that's the set of things. Is there anything else that folks want to talk about before we break for the community meeting? Um, remember we had a minor issue with uh, adapters. So probably me or Denise will take care about it in a few next days. Uh, I is this the yeah this is the this is the overcalling of of things if i recall yeah so if chain element has a client to server adapter then all next uh, elements after it will be adapting and adapting uh to yeah clients they're over, all over and over again yeah um I, I i appreciate you guys taking the time to sort of point out exactly what was going on there um you know, once it's pointed out, it's like sort of obvious how that ended up happening. Um, but I, I it, but the, thing, the good news is I, you know, one of the things that's really nice is I think we can, number one, it worked anyway, which is always good. Um, but number two, I, I think we can literally fix it and it won't actually be impactful on any of the rest of the work that we do, which is sort of a triumph of localization. Um, yep. The fact that, that you can have something that's sort of that screwed up and A, it works and B, you can fix it within, you know, three, four files instead of hundreds and hundreds of files. So, all right, cool. And then I, I know also, I know Denise and Frederick and Andre have weighed in. There's a PR out uh, on API to allow us to have multiple IP addresses um, in the IP context for source and dust, um, because that's sort of an obvious thing that we're going to need. Um, I've, I've, ask folks to please hold off on merging that number one because more eyeballs is always good but number two i, I want to go ahead and prepare the fixes to the sdk and other downstream packages um first just to get a sense of like how how this affects the the, the usability of the system um and also because i don't want api to be sort of blocked from new changes while it waits for the, the downstream fixes cool Anything else? Otherwise, I'm inclined to yield back the five minutes and we'll see everybody on the community call. Oh, I'm fine. 
All right. Talk, talk to you later. I'm fine. Yeah. See you. See you.